The young widow was having fun with a stallion. The stableman was taken aback by what he saw. Hello, dear guests and viewers of our channel. Have a seat and get comfortable. And I hope you enjoy listening and viewing our stories. Kate's husband was a breeder of thoroughbred horses. He had his own stables in the countryside. Kate jokingly said that she couldn't say for sure if it was just Joe she married. Perhaps it was the horses that played a role in her decision. Kate had a soft spot for horses since childhood. She had a variety of horse toys and collected calendars and all kinds of pictures of horses. Kate lived in an ordinary family in a small city flat. Her parents couldn't even afford simple singing or drawing lessons because they didn't have much money. There could be no question of equestrian school. Of course not. You wouldn't want to. Do you think they just go horseback riding? No, the horse would have to be groomed and cleaned, she said, as if she were an equestrian expert. Kate didn't argue because she knew it was no use arguing with her parents. When she asked to go to the pool, she was told that she would have to get up at 6 a.m., even on weekends, and that she definitely couldn't do it. Although the only huge sleepers in the family were her parents. Kate liked to draw, too, so she asked to go to art school. There was no charge. But someone had to drive Kate to class, and her parents were working late. Strangely enough, for some reason, she could go to school five stops by bus, but a little further downtown, with a transfer to the underground, she couldn't. So the denial of admission to equestrian school didn't surprise Kate in the slightest. All that was left to do was dream and envy the girls who got in. And so time flies and her playground days are over. And already in the Institute, Kate gets acquainted with Joe. He comes from a wealthy family. His father runs a business. But soon Joe takes over the business because he's already the manager there. He runs the business all by himself because Joe's father is in very poor health. No, of course no one expected what you're thinking now. Joe didn't expect his father to die and leave his son the business as an inheritance at all. The father simply had to transfer all the assets to his son within days so that he could retire and live out his old age in peace. When Kate found out what kind of business Joe's family had, she was overjoyed. Fate itself had brought them together. All day, Kate was stuck at the stables. Even Joe was talking. I don't get it. Are you coming to see me or the horses? Is it just me, or do you like Morning Dawn more than me? Joe asked. Morning Dawn is my favorite stallion, Kate replied, smiling. Better watch yourself. I'm jealous, Joe joked. So it's not me you'll be jealous of, but the stallion to me? Jeez, Kate was joking too. Yes. Joe's most beloved prospective stallion's name was Morning Dawn. Horse breeders have that. Kate had never been able to get into all the rules by which they named their horses. At least, everything was more or less clear with the word morning. It was the name of the stables run by Joe, so all his horses carried the prefix morning to their names. Perhaps Kate's favorite horse was simply born early in the morning, and therefore given the name Dawn. Almost immediately after the wedding, Joe's father signed over all the required documents to his son. A long and happy life with a secure future awaited the young couple. Kate was already anticipating how she would teach her future children writing. Joe really wanted a son, and Kate wanted a son and a daughter and possibly another son. All was fine and well, until Joe died. Well, who would have thought that the young up-and-coming businessman would be out of this world so soon, and that he would pass away before his old, sick, and decrepit father? Joe's dad cried at his son's funeral and lamented that he would have no grandchildren now. His life had been wasted. The old man had a very touching and trusting relationship with Kate. She literally became a daughter to him. She didn't claim her share of her husband's inheritance, but everything passed on to Kate. The old man knew that she wouldn't kick him out. Kate wouldn't dare. She loved Joe's father even more than she did her own parents, who, in fact, never cared about her. Kate could barely cope with her grief. She couldn't even look in the direction of other men. As it should be, she was in mourning for a year. But after that, the situation didn't change at all. Kate rejected advances and proposals of any kind. Darling, 
As much as I hate to say it, I do wish you would remarry. I'm old. I'm sick. I want to see my grandchildren. You're like family to me. Even if it's not Joe's, it doesn't really matter. A lot of it was his own fault. How many times have I told him not to ride that motorcycle? Kate was told by her father-in-law. Thank you for your kindness, but I can't yet so quickly. All my memories are of him, Kate replied. Joe crashed on his motorcycle. There was an accident, and he died on the way to the hospital. Kate didn't get to say goodbye to him. She didn't know anything at all. She'd been told from the hospital when he died. But strange rumors were circulating in the stables that the young widow had found an interesting comfort that Kate had been frequenting the stables. There was talk that she didn't go to the stableman at all. Even though the stableman was rather young and handsome, he even looked a bit like Joe, only a couple of years older. Daniel had been working in the stables since he was a boy. He lived in the village nearby and had been coming to the stables from an early age. He was very fond of horses, at first in play and then in reality. So Daniel stuck to the job and stayed. No one else could handle a horse as skillfully as he did. Back when Joe's father had been master, he had always welcomed the young worker. And if anyone, a bored young widow, could run into, it would be him. But no, the word was that she had found some fun with her favorite stallion. Thank God those rumors hadn't reached Joe's old father. Otherwise, he would probably have thrown the merry widow out of the house and disinherited her. The unfortunate old man was already feeling so unwell that he wouldn't even leave the house. But the stableman Daniel had heard these rumors in great detail, and he couldn't understand why the young and beautiful woman was so desperate as to run to a stallion. Daniel had known Kate since she had appeared in the stables, and couldn't admit even to himself that he liked his master's wife. Yes, Daniel was in love with Kate. He wasn't happy about Joe's death, but he decided that he had a real chance to open his heart to the woman he loved. Daniel had grown up without a father, and there was basically no one to tell him how to treat women, so he continued to beat around the bush, and it was as if Kate was oblivious to his hints and glances. After these terrible rumors... Daniel decided that he had to see for himself the immoral behavior of his immediate landlady and only then expunge her from his heart forever. He saw no other way. Once again, when Kate appeared at the stables, looking around to make sure no one saw her, she slipped into the stalls for morning dawn. Gathering up his courage a little, Daniel approached the stall, and when he peered inside, he was astonished at the sight he saw. His love was lying on the straw, with the stallion curled up next to her and its head on her lap, and in front of them was a photo of Joe. The two of them looked at it and cried. As it turned out, Joe's favorite horse had also missed his master madly, so without doing anything wrong, the widow would go to her husband's four-legged friend, and together they would mourn him. People, on the other hand, did nothing but spread silly rumors. Daniel suddenly felt very ashamed of himself for believing people's rumors and silly talk. Out of the excess of emotions, he unknowingly stepped into the stall and confessed his love to Kate. Six months later, they were married. When Daniel's mother came to the wedding, it turned out she was having an affair with the old owner, Joe's father. When she found out about the pregnancy, it was too late. The man had already married someone else. Thus, it turned out that Daniel was Joe's illegitimate brother. The family was reunited, and the old owner essentially saw his own grandchildren. This inspired the old man so much that it gave him a little more strength, so he personally accompanied his eldest grandson to first grade. Such a wonderful, tangled love story happened in our region. Thank you for listening to it till the end. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and like this video. And also click on that bell icon to not miss any future videos. Until next time, all the best.